Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Aroth, and today we are diving into another great video into Arcanum's Destruction Spells. Today we're going to be looking at the Frost Spells. Uh, as you can see, we've got about 10 of them to dive into, not counting a couple Apocalypse ones that I find particularly helpful for setting up demos. We're going to get right into it. So, our first one is called Crippling Chill. The target is slowed by 20%, deals 20% less damage, and loses 9 stamina per second for 30 seconds. These effects are doubled if the target has 50% or less stamina. So this is an interesting approach to frost spells, because not only are you draining the target's stamina, but you set almost like a kill point, so that once they have 50% less stamina, they are slowed more, they do less damage, and they are inevitably even weaker. Which I think is a nice way to level the frost effects on top of each other, rather than just having it be a static effect that affects the user the same, regardless of how much stamina they have. The one weakness about this is it doesn't look like it does any damage. It looks like this is just a straight debuff, but we're going to go into a fight soon and check. Just in case it doesn't do any damage, our next one is Crystalline Spear, a massive column of ice that does 128 points of frost damage to health and stamina in a 10-foot radius. Deals 50% bonus damage to slowed, paralyzed, or frozen targets and staggers them. So these two should actually work really well in concert because obviously Crippling Chill will slow, and then Crystalline Spear, if the enemy is slowed, does extra damage. So let's see, so first off, before we go actually into the fight, let's have a look and see if this is, is this a ranged attack? Is this a single target? That is, okay, I guess it's just a touch spell. That is not a touch spell. Okay, all right, let's dive on in and see what we got here. Touch, 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 tickle, tickle, tickle. There we go, all right, you are Slowed, weakened, and taking a crap ton of damage. All right, and then, oh yeah, this really is a touch spell. Yep, you gotta be right up close to do that. So it slows the target, reduces their damage, which is really helpful for mages, and then because this person was slowed, the Crystalline Spear did extra damage, which I think that actually worked really well. Very nice. So if you're doing a pure mage build and you don't want to get hit at all, you can also use your shouts in conjunction with that to keep the distance. And then when you latch up, when you stack on the slow effects, you can throw them further away. And in that way, you can basically make sure you're never hit, like ever. <laughs> Although it does have a pretty small blast radius. So if you're getting swarmed from multiple directions, that could still be a problem. The one downside I'm seeing is that this uh, crippling chill spell is a touch spell, so you got to be like right up to the target before you're able to hit them, which for mages is, is problematic. Uh, the best way to probably make that work would be to use your full power dragon shout and then tickle them as they're trying to get up. At that point, you can wail on them without worrying about getting hit. <laughs> that was a good effect. I don't even know where the body went. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Ah, okay, so I think if I go over here, I can trigger the next wave of enemies. But before we do that, let's look at our next couple options here. We're going to go for Frost Piercer and Frozen Maelstrom. Uh, Frost Piercer. Oh, wow. That's, uh, the one thing with Arcadum, they add in so much stuff for every spell, it makes it really hard to read all of these. I have to put my nose like right up to the monitor to try and read this super small font, but I'll do my best. Ah, Frost Piercer, a javelin of cold that pierces through objects and enemies. Oh, that's pretty cool. To deal 36 frost damage to health and stamina. Applies a stacking slow of 20% for 4 seconds. Upon reaching 4 stacks, the target is frozen for 6 seconds, taking 36 bonus magical damage. This effect can only occur once every 30 seconds per target. So with Frost Piercer, let's see, you have to, yeah, so the stack is specifically for Frost Piercer. It isn't hit him once with Frost Piercer and then three times with other spells. You have to hit him four times with Frost Piercer and then it will also proc a Frozen condition. And that Frozen condition can only happen once every 30 seconds. What I really do like about Frost Piercer though is it goes through targets, so it's kind of like the Chain Lightning spell, except instead of jumping, it still is just directional which then requires you to still have the wisdom to not make any friendly fire type of problems, <laughs> which I am known for. 
Uh, but yeah, that's really cool. I like that it's just an apprentice level spell, so you can get this really early in your playthrough and be able to apply these slows and freezing effects to multiple opponents, which I think is really cool. Uh, we're going to use this in concert with Frozen Maelstrom. This is an icy storm lasting 30 seconds that deals 10 frost damage and reduces frost and magic resist by 4% for 10 seconds per second. Oh, so it's stacking. So the longer the enemy is in the Maelstrom, the more damage and less magic resist they have. Okay. Upon losing 50% frost resist, enemies are frozen, taking 250 frost damage. So in other words, both of these spells, once they are in effect long enough or get enough stacks, freeze the targets. So if we just spam these two, we should be able to get us some human ice cubes, assuming I can get this little ambush going. I know I'm out of lockpicks, but is that... There we go. Okay, so here's the master one first. There we go. All right, so that... And then here's our Frost Piercer. So as you can see, that is a very narrow... Whoa, hi. Oh, wait, that's an opposing... <laughs> that's a Frost Mage. Okay, that makes more sense. I was super confused. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Cluster together, please. Oh, yeah. All right, let's try to keep them in the cold for as long as possible. And for you, I want to see if I can proc that freezing condition. Oh, yep, saw it. Yeah, little shards of ice coming off her. She froze as she died. Cool. All right, so this is a master level spell that is Frozen Maelstrom. So the longer they stay in here, the lower their frost resistance and their magic resistance will go. So this is kind of like your boss killer, right? If you're Even if you're doing a modded playthrough and your boss has 100% frost resistance, you can use this to drop that which is, it's an interesting balance to me because a lot of modded bosses get pretty, pretty powerful. So it's cool to have abilities that can also, I don't know if circumvent that, but at least keep it challenging, right? So it's not super easy, but it's also not crazy difficult. And then that's your, oh, that's the range on this is really nice. Oh yeah, that is really nice. So if you saw that this can go through multiple targets. So if you're in a hallway and like 20 guys are coming at you, you can hit all of them. And on the fourth hit, they will all freeze. Which is, again, I mean, you, this is an apprentice level spell. You can get this right at the start of your playthrough, which I think is fantastic. You know what? I'm going to switch to uh, Akatile's Recital and get rid of this burning. <laughs> uh, I have the burning soul buff from my last demo on, and that doesn't make any sense for a fire mage, so we're going to get rid of that. Okay, that's much better. I think we are going to put my uh, stone flesh back on, though, so I'm not a completely helpless wizard as we're going through this process. There we go. All right, that's better. All right, so the next two spells that I want to demonstrate are Galid Gale and Glacial Ray. Galid Gale deals 54 points of frost damage to health and stamina in a line. It leaves a trail of icy vortices that last 80 seconds. So basically, this leaves a path that will apply frost effects to everyone in it and deal damage. Then you have the Glacial Ray. This is a beam of cold energy that deals 73 frost damage per second and leaves icy barricades that block movement. This deals 80, they deal 80 frost damage per second and slow nearby enemies. So the, actually, you know what, before I take this into a fight, let's give you guys a decent idea of what this looks like, because these are actually pretty big. Actually, this might be, there we go. All right, so there's your Gale, oh jeez. So the Gale itself does a lot of damage, and it's another one of those, remember with like the Apocalypse stuff, um, Perilous Paths, there was a Molten Torrent as well. If you aim right at the ground, you just get this little patch, but if you raise your cursor so that it's parallel to the ground, you get a lot more out of the spell. See that? So you want to make sure that you're shooting parallel to the ground so that this entire area is wreathed with frost magic and it slows and does damage to baddies that are trying to come along it to kill you. And then while they're slowed and approaching, you have the Glacial Ray spell. So these spikes, the ice spikes that come up, not only are they impassable, see, they, 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 you can block enemy transport that way, block their movement, but it also does damage when you're near them and drains enemy stamina. So we're gonna hop over to this Little, bunt, little bandit camp here. See if we've got any bad guys here. Anybody want to play? Happy little frost mage looking to pick a fight. Anybody? 
Huh. Okay. Oh, wait. Ah, there we are. Come play with me. Oh, little frost mage thinks he's thinks he's something. Thinks he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I think these things block projectiles. Let's find out. If I hold still, see if I get shot. Ah, they do. They block projectiles. That is so cool. All right, you have a new defense against archers. Oh, jeez, but they can shoot in between them. So, okay, be careful. <laughs> they can still shoot between them. Oh, maybe I can line these guys up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you have to stop, and there you go. Oh, that one's down. And that one, too. All right, there we go. So, your Galen Gale spell, it still does quite a bit of damage. As you can see, I was one-shotting bandits. So, the damage on this thing alone is really nice. That is an adept level spell. So, again, you can get this pretty early in your playthrough. But the Glacial Ray, this puppy, this is expert level, so that will take you a bit longer to get. But it's awesome, especially when you're in a hallway, because you can just whoop, and boom, they can't get to you. And then you just hit them with, you know, the Gale again, and they can't get to you, and they're constantly getting damage. It's a, uh, it's a mage's dream. I really like that effect, too, for a Frost Mage, because the theme for Frost Mages in Skyrim is a lot more about crowd control and slowing down your enemies so they can't quite get to you which I think makes a, makes a great addition from Arcana for this mod. <laughs> Did you see that? Like, it jumped at me, but I built the ice thing in its path so it didn't reach me. So this spell actually has a lot of potential for manipulating NPCs that are trying to reach you in time. And if you stack them up right, you may even be able to block projectiles from getting to you. So this, this spell has a lot of potential. This is almost like uh, water bending for if you were a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. Because, I mean, I mean, you can put your wall up, and uh, there you are. So it's like an ice wall that actually blocks projectiles, for the most part. Like, you, you have to be careful that when I had two that were right next to each other, I did notice an arrow I was able to get between them. So you, it, takes, it will take practice to figure out the right angles at which to place them to protect you, but that's the best kind of mod in the first place. It shouldn't just solve all of your problems or just do one thing. It should present a new range of options for you to learn about and get used to and play with. Let's see if there's anything there that I can kill. Okay, all right, seeing as how I've already ticked off the next wave of, of bad guys, let's check out the next wave of spells. All right, next is Icy Vortex. Summons a vortex of cold air that reduces the frost resistance of enemies by 25% and slows them by 25%. Okay, here's the important thing to note about this. A, this is a novice level spell. You can get this right out of the gate. Here's the thing. This spell does not do any damage. Let me let that sink in. This is specifically a debuff. That's why it's a novice level and the magicka cost is super small because it doesn't actually do damage. It's meant to slow them down so that your other frost spells have a greater chance of hitting. And, and doing all their nastiness. That said, so once we've got them slowed down with our icy vortex, we're gonna use rhymed, rimmed, rimmed drop, rhyme drop, rhyme drop, I think that's how they say it, which is described as a ball of hoarfrost that deals 27 damage to health and stamina to all enemies in a five foot radius. So it has a very small blast radius, but it does hurt a group of people. If the target has less than 20% of their maximum stamina remaining, they additionally take 9 frost damage to health per second for 5 seconds. This effect does not stack. So Rhyme Drop is supposed to punish them when they're out of stamina. And then Icy Vortex it reduces their resistance and slows them. But it doesn't necessarily take away their stamina. So, well, this should be interesting. Alright, I did not realize I had saved the... Okay, no, I've still got it. I was worried I was going to end this on two novice spells. That's not much of a... Not much of a finale, however, since I have one more big one after this one, we should be fine. Okay, so that is, it does, oh, it does do a little bit of damage, that's comforting. Oh, okay. So let me just clarify here. So Icy Vortex is what's creating this swirling ground there. It does a little bit of damage, but not much. And then our next one is Rhyme Drop, and that's what I'm trying to hit this guy with, but it's very specific. It's very precise, right? It's almost as precise as an arrow, if that makes any sense. Because I was missing with a couple of shots from pretty decent... Oh, well, that was very rude. There we go. Okay, slowed, weakened. And sidestep. And wash, rinse, and repeat. And there we go. 
Okay. So, not bad. These are actually both novice level spells. So if you're coming right out of the gate, you can do this. You're gonna nuke the area so that the guys are slowed and have less frost resistance, which actually is really useful because half of Skyrim bandits seem to be Nords that are resistant to frost. So this actually helps you bypass their natural resistance. And then Rhyme Drop, let me just double check what those effects were. You got damage, drains their stamina. When they have 20% stamina left or less, they take extra damage per second. Okay, so the idea there is use Rhyme Drop once you have drained all their stamina. And I'm, depending on the perk overhaul you're using, you will have a lot of that anyway to work with. Okay, so the one downside to my plan is Soul of Winter is a two-hand spell, but this is more of a buff that you cast before combat, so we're going to cast that first, and then we will finish up with Whiteout? Huh. That doesn't look like it's dealing damage anyway. Well, this should be fun. Okay, so we're going to do Soul of Winter first. I think this is the one that I showed in my showcase. For 60 seconds, you create a frost storm around yourself, grows in power and area every six seconds or whenever you cast a frost spell for the first time every six seconds. Storm gains 21 bonus frost damage per second. Its radius increases by 10 feet with every stack up to six times. At full power, enemy in, enemies in the area lose 30% frost resistance. Okay, so this is a buff that you will apply to yourself before you go into combat or after you use like a time freeze shout so that you have time to actually cast this thing before combat really kicks off. But I do want to look at Whiteout as well. Is that a two-handed one? Okay, it's just one-handed. Because it looks like... I want to make sure that this is a, just a stealth thing or if it actually does damage. Creates a chilling fog with a radius of 35 feet for 35 seconds. All enemies within take... Okay, it does do damage. All enemies within take 15 frost damage per second and have their magic grit resist reduced by 15%. Okay, so we're going to start with Soul of Winter and then we're going to siege the, the hillside here and uh, introduce these Nords to a frozen death, which is probably not how they expected to meet their maker. All right, there's our frost storm. So since Whiteout is an area of effect debuff, let's go ahead and whip out Frost Piercer because it's cheap, it's light, it's what you guys are going to be using right at the get-go anyway. And let's... All right, so here's our Whiteout. Whiteout, is that what this spell was called? Let me just double check. Yeah, Whiteout. So, wow, the blast radius on this thing is huge. Look at this. Really makes you feel like you're in a blizzard. Where is the other guy? Oh, there you are. Hi. Ooh. Wow. Okay. This. Okay. So, I think I'm getting some, <laughs> some effects that are laying over. So, the storm that you're seeing now is the soul of winter, right? Once I had my, once I cast my sixth frost spell, this Soul of Winter buff kicked in, and anything in here is getting frost damage, they're losing frost resistance, they're losing stamina, it's a beautiful thing. There is also Whiteout, which is a... I'm going to have to get some distance here. So Whiteout is an area of effect frost spell that creates a storm. Yep, so it creates a frost storm in a set geographical area that also lowers their magic resist as well as does frost damage if i'm not mistaken yes yes frost damage and magic resist so all you really need to do is stack the two and you you are the center of a massive blizzard of vortex of uh, ice and cold which i think is absolutely amazing and I'm pretty sure all of these can be used outside. I know some, like with Apocalypse, for example, some spells couldn't be used inside. Particularly ones that are like summoning a volcano and things. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. You probably wouldn't use that inside. But I think all of these you can use inside. So you could literally like stack Soul of Winter on top of Whiteout, on top of maybe Icy Vortex. That was another one was like Area of Effect. And just like turn the entire room into one giant snowstorm? You know what? Let's go ahead and try that. All right, so we've got Icy Vortex, Whiteout, and then Soul of Winter. I want to see what it looks like when you have all of the snow spells stacked on top of each other. This should be fun. Let me see. So this is the Soul of Winter. We're just going to throw in a couple. You have to do six casts in order to get the storm up to maximum power. We want to see what this baby is like at full power. And then we have Whiteout, which we add on top of this. Do I also have Blizzard? I think I might. That's the I know that's technically the master spell from Vanilla Game. 
but it would be fun to stack that. Oh, it doesn't look like I have that. That's fine. This is supposed to be in a uh, Arcanium demo anyway, but ah, oh, just look at that. Can you not just imagine the, uh, from a Frost Mage's standpoint, this is what a Master Frost Mage should be able to unleash, right? It should just be this swirling vortex of icy death. Ah, I love it. I love it. It kind of reminds me of a Frost version of, uh, it was a Pyre spell from Sacrosanct that had this similar like swirling flame effect. Il Il Ilma's Pyre, I know I'm forgetting, I'm getting the name wrong, but uh, it was part of the uh, Hemomancy quest line, I think. It was a part of Blood Magic that was just fantastic. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I think that is, I think that's it for our little demo. That covers all of the Frost Spells. Uh, quick clarification. These Frost Spells are the ones you can get right out of the gate, assuming you are a master level wizard. Uh, these are no None of these required quests to unlock, right? So I'm saving that for later so that you guys can get the, the quest experience separately so I can walk you through it in case there's any confusion. Uh, but yeah, that was the demonstration of the Frost spells that are available through the Arcanum mod. Uh, it's fa a fantastic way to play, particularly if you're using one of the perk overhauls that makes Frost an absolute menace. I hope you guys enjoyed the demonstration. Feel free to give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Frost spell so far was in this demonstration. I actually really liked Frost Piercer. I know it's just an a, a apprentice level spell, but being able to hit everything in a line, particularly in Skyrim's many hallways, is really helpful to me. It makes a lot of sense. And I love being able to hit multiple opponents with one shot. Uh, so that's one of my favorites. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later. Take care.